Hello class, welcome to the video. This video is part 2 video for your chapter 8 in your FA2. So in this video, we are going to try the classroom exercise 8.1. Below is the statement of financial position and statement of comprehensive income for SWP Limited for the financial year 31st December 2018. So you can see this is SWP Limited statement of financial position and followed by their statement of comprehensive income. So let's look at the requirement for this question. So we are required to prepare or we are required to calculate the following ratio for SWP limited for the year ended 31st December 2018. We are required to prepare profitability ratio, liquidity and working capital control ratio, gearing and financial risk and followed by investment performance. There is some requirement for our answer. <coughs> your answer shall be present in two decimal point right so we have to do some round up if we need so we start from the profitability and efficiency <coughs> so profitability and efficiency <coughs> the rest ratio the first ratio we are going to compute is the gross profit margin formula of gross profit margin we use gross profit div divided by the revenue of the company times 100% so gross profit of the company 53996 revenue 178694 one seven eight six nine four times hundred percent five three nine nine six divided by one seven eight six nine four times hundred percent so we get our answer thirteen point two two percent next ratio Next ratio will be our net profit margin. Net profit margin we base on net profit divided by revenue times hundred percent. <coughs> net profit of the company profit after tax will equals to your net profit. Eh? So you can write net profit here. 24001 so we write 24001 divided by 178694 times 100% we get answer 13.43% next ratio next ratio is regarding ROCE return on capital employed so first of all we have to get the information of our capital employed capital employed we use the simple way we use the non current liability plus total equity of the company so let's have a look so this information we have to get from statement of compressive uh, financial position non current liability 124004 sorry 124044 124044 <coughs> total equity 193576 193576 so the total capital employed in this company three one seven six two oh and ROCE formula we use profit before interest and tax 
divided by capital employed times 100%. Profit before interest and tax. This information we have to extract from our statement of comprehensive income. This will be our PBIT. Operating profit equals to PBIT. 33424. <coughs> so we use 33424 divided by 317620 times 100%. Answer ten point five two per cent. Next ratio. Next ratio is regarding your return on equity. For the return on equity, the formula we use net profit divided by total equity times 100% so net profit of the company 24001 total equity will be 1935.76 times 100% so answer Twelve point four per cent. So perhaps we can make a remark on the answer. Next, we are going to compute asset turnover. For asset turnover, <coughs> we use revenue divided by total asset of the company. Revenue of the company, 178694. Total asset, this information we have to extract from our SOFE. <coughs> this amount, 422670. Answer So the answer will be 0 0.42 times In the ratio calculation You have to clearly tell your uh, reader What is your answer It's either a percentage times or days If you did not indicate what is the uh, meanings for this your this calculation? You will not get full marks in your exam. So this is very important for you to indicate. Next, we have basically complete all the profitability and efficiency ratio. The next ratio that we are going to calculate will be liquidity and working capital management or working capital control the first ratio that we are required to calculate under this category first one current ratio how to get our current ratio we use total current asset divided by total current liabilities so this information we have to get from our statement of financial position total non current asset 350472 total current liability 105050 105050 Answer
so we get the answer 1.41 let's check the answer again 350472 divided by 105050 the answer should be 3.34 times so for this company which is quite safe because they have enough current asset to cover the current liability they are not required to sell their non-current asset in order to make the payment next the next ratio will be more stringent which we call quick ratio for quick ratio we use total current asset minus the inventory of the company and then divided by the total current liabilities so we put the information that we know first this is the total non-current asset and our total current liability is 105050 so we have to get the information of your inventory this information we can get in your current asset <coughs> 1, 2, 3, S, 6, 0 so let's compute so first we have to use 3, 5, 0, 4, 7, 2 minus 1, 2, 3, S, 6, 0 when we get this number we only divide it by 1, 0, 5, 0, 5, 0 so we get our answer 2.16 times 2.16 times so for this company their quick ratio is quite okay as well because without selling their inventory they have enough current asset to make the current liability payment next ratio next ratio is receivable collection days for the receivables collection day we use the receivable divided by the credit revenue or credit sales multiplied with 365 days why 365 days? because one year we have 365 days you no need to adjust 366 for like 2020 okay we just follow through 365 will do so receivables in this company 153126 153126 and we have revenue but there is no other information to show us what is the breakdown of this revenue how many percent is in credit how many percent is in cash so we just use this 178694 will do So our answer so it means that for this company their customer may need to take 312.77 days to make the repayment it means that they collect quite slow from their customer Alright, so here may indicate that they may have a poor customer control management. So number four. Number four is payable payment dates. So for payable payment date, we use payable divided by credit purchase times three six five days. So payable for this company we can get from SOFP. Three six payables payables five five three one seven five five three one seven divided by the credit purchase. So in the income statement, can we get any information on the credit purchase? 
can we get any information on the total purchase if not then we just use cost of sales with you one two four six nine eight one two four six nine eight times three six five days calculator five five three one seven divided by one two four six nine eight times three six five so we get one six one point nine two days <coughs> it means that from the purchase from the payable the company spent 162 days around that to make the payment to their supplier and last one in your liquidity and working capital management will be your inventory turnover days so for inventory turnover days how we calculate we base on inventory divided by COGS times 365 days so inventory inventory of the company 123S60 cost of goods so we can just extract from here 124698 times 365 days answer Answer is three six two point five five days, around three six three days. So it means that when the company purchase the stock from their supplier, it may take around one year to sell to their customer. Next, the next ratio that we are going to discuss will be the gearing and financial risk. So under gearing and financial risk, the first item that we want to calculate will be the interest cover, interest coverage. Interest coverage, we use profit before interest and tax divided by the interest expenses of the company. So let's have a look. Finance costs will refer as interest expenses, meaning that the operating profit is three three four two four. Three three four two four divided by the interest expenses, which is one four one one. Answer. Three three four two four divided by one four one one. So it's 23.69 days. Sorry, 23.69 times, not day. Second one, second one will be debt to equity ratio. For debt to equity ratio, we use non current liabilities divided by the equities of the company so non current liabilities of the company 124044 124044 and our total equities one nine three five seven six. One nine three five seven six times hundred percent. So you add a hundred percent here. Answer we get sixty four point zero eight percent. Next, another ratio. 
will be debt to capital employed. So we use non current liabilities to divide the capital employed of the company. So we can use the information here. Your non current liability is one two four zero four four. Your capital employee capital employed will be one two four zero four four plus total equity one nine three five seven six times hundred percent. So we get the answer for the capital employee first. One two four zero four four plus one nine three five seven six. 317620 317620 So to get the debt to capital employee ra ratio, we use 124044 divided by 317620 times 100%. We get 39.05%. Right? The answer will be 3 39.05% so we have complete the gearing and financial risk ratio and next the next ratio will be investment ratio the first one in the investment ratio will be earnings Per share. The short form for earnings per share is EPS. So how to get the earnings per share for the company? We use net profit divided by the number of shares of the company. So let's have a look on what information we have now. We have the net profit, I guess. The net profit is 24001. 24001. Next, we have to find out what is the number of shares for the company. So, numbers of shares, we can have a look in our statement of financial position. Here, saying that the value for the share capital is 80,000. And the par value, the original value of the share is 50 cents each. So from here, we can find out that the number of share equals to the value 80,000 divided by the number of each share, which is 50 cents. So we get 160,000. So this is the number of share for this company. The total value is 80,000 and the par value per share is 50 cents. So the total number of share is 160. Two four zero zero one divided by 160. So you get 0 0.15. So the value will be 0 0.15 in dollar, but normally we, when we present earning per share, we will present the answer in cents, 15 cents. Next, the next will be PE ratio, price earnings ratio. In short form, we call PE. For PE formula, we use market share price divided by earning per share. So for this company, do we have the information of market share price? Yes, it says that the market share price is 1.21 ringgit. So we use 1.21 divided by 0 0.15 so our answer one 
1.07 so sorry 8.07 times it means that by investing this company at the price of 1.1 1 ringgit and 21 cent and every year we assume that the company maintains its earning which is 15 cent per year in the eight years time we can fully recover our investment in this company next ratio next ratio is dividend coverage dividend coverage we use net profit divided by the dividend paid so net profit of the company we can check this amount from our uh, statement of comprehensive income 24001 so we write 24001 dividend paid so we know that the dividend per share is 6 cent so we have to get what is the total dividend paid during the year so how to get we can use total number of share we can use total number of share multiplied with the dividend per share to get what to get the total dividend so what is the number of share this company we have the answer before 160,000 so we can use 160 times 0 0.06 why 0 0.06 because this is 6 cent we have to convert into the ringgit or dollar so times 0 0.06 answer nine thousand six hundred so we apply this answer here the total dividend paid during the year will be nine thousand six hundred so we get the answer two point five times and last one will be your dividend year dividend year of the company we use dividend per share divided by the market share price and multiply by 100 percent dividend per share of the company is six cent each market share price 1.21 and we have to multiply we have to convert our earning in a percentage 0 0.06 divided by 121021 1.21 times 100 so we get 4.96 percent so meaning that if you invest this company with the market share price 1.21 because this is the amount that you paid to get the share from the market and we assume that every year the company can give you a six cent dividend your annual dividend year the annual profit from the dividend is 4.96 percent from your investment so this will be the last ratio for our investment performance and we have complete all the ratio calculation so that's all for the exercise 8.1 and for the remaining exercise i will discuss with you in our live section so if you have any question in related in relation to the ratio calculation you can leave me a message in the lms or send me by email so that's all for the chapter 8 video thanks for watching